Hello, this is Dr. Muhammad Sajidul Islam, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, UP. Today I am going to talk about the Aristotle's poetics. What is poetics all about and who was Aristotle? Aristotle was the famous disciple of Plato who first theorized fine arts and Aristotle differed with his teacher Plato in his book Poetics. Poetics is a collection of lecture that he delivered with his uh, students and in Poetics Aristotle deals with the principles of poetic art in general and tragedy in particular on the basis of his analysis of existing Greek literature. Aristotle's observations on poetic art do not necessarily apply to the literature produced later or in other countries. However, some of his observations are of general nature and applicable to the literature of any period of any country. Plato de denied the role of literature in his scheme of things. He thought that literature or any fine art is doubly away from reality and it does not have any value as such for the good of the citizen. But Aristotle was the first to value poetry for its artistic nature and the pleasure it provides. Aristotle's observations on the nature of poetic art. Aristotle considered that poetic art is imitative in nature and the act of imitation itself is pleasurable. It is pleasurable for the poet as well as the reader who reads the poetry. Now what does the poet imitate? The poet imitates things as they were or are, things as they are said or thought to be, or things as they ought to be, that is the past or the present, what is the common belief of the people and what is the ideal. The function of the poet is not to relate what has happened but what may happen, what is possible according to the law of probability or necessity. That is to say, the function of the poet is not to give a photographic presentation, representation of the real world on the basis of observation. Rather, the poet relates what can happen or what may happen rather according to the law of probability or necessity that is in a given situation. The poet's job is more philosophical and higher than that of a historian. Historians record the particular whereas the poets tend to express the universal and Aristotle thinks that the job of a poet is of higher order than the job of a historian. Function of poetry. Aristotle does not make any categorical statement about the function of poetry. However, by implication it is suggested at many places in poetics that the function of poetry like other fine arts is to please the audience. The act of imitation and the harmony and rhythm are pleasing both to the poet and to the reader. That is to say the primary function of poetry or any fine art is to delight the audience. Aristotle does not state like Plato that the function of poetry and other arts is to teach. The sole purpose of poetry is to provide enduring pleasure and aesthetic enjoyment. Teaching of civil morality is only incidental. Aristotle does not deny that poetry sh should not teach, but it, it may teach only incidentally. The sole function is not teaching. The sole function is to provide delight to the audience. Aristotle considers tragedy to be the highest form of poetry that arouses the emotions of pity and fear with a view to their purgation or catharsis. Aristotle's observations on tragedy. Tragedy, according to Aristotle, originated from epic which imitates the noble actions of good men. Aristotle defines tragedy as an imitation of an action that is serious, complete and of a certain magnitude. In language embellished with each kind of artistic ornament, the several kind being found in separate parts of the play, in the form of action, not of narrative, 
through pity and fear effecting the proper purgation of these emotions. Butcher, Aristotle's theory of poetry and fine arts, page 23. By serious, Aristotle means a tale of suffering, exciting pity and fear. By complete, he means self-contained with a beginning, a middle and an end. That is to say, beginning before which there is nothing, middle that connects the beginning to the end and helps the plot to develop and by of a certain magnitude he means a, of a reasonable length that allows the proper unfolding of the plot and also can easily be grasped by the audience. Now let us see what are the constituent parts of tragedy. According to Aristotle, tragedy has six constituent parts and the most important is the plot, next character, next to character is thought and next to that is diction, then song, spectacle. The first three, plot, character and thought are the object of imitation. The next two, the diction and song are the medium of imitation. The last spectacle is the manner of imitation. Plot is the most important part and spectacle the least. According to Aristotle, without the spectacle, a tragedy can still be enjoyed by reading. The spectacle depends upon the mechanics of stage directions. So that is not the role of the poet. Now the structure of the plot. According to Aristotle, a tragedy should maintain three unities. Namely, the unity of action, the unity of time and the unity of place. A good tragic plot should show the change of fortune from good to bad to arouse the emotions of pity and fear which is the prerequisite for a tragedy and a plot can be simple or complex. A simple plot becomes complex when peripetia or reversal of situation and the anagnorisis that is recognition enter into it. A perfect tragedy should have a complex plan according to Aristotle. Now what is the concept of tragic hero in Aristotle's poetics? According to Aristotle, a tragic hero cannot be an eminently good man. The suffering of such a man will be shocking. The tragic hero neither can be a bad man or a villain because the suffering of that man will only satisfy the audience. The tragic hero is a man who is not eminently good but just yet whose misfortune is brought about not by the vice or depravity but by some error of judgment. The misfortune of such a man will excite pity and fear. And finally, that will help for the catharsis of these emotions and the function of tragedy will be fulfilled. Thank you.